Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank, where the AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Womblies are continuing their European adventures, bringing the Norwegian team Rosenborg to Plow Lane. This is a huge game. It is the last game, potentially, of our European adventures. As you can see right now, we are not qualified. However, if Torino can beat or tie St. Etienne in a game that is happening at the same time as this one, uh, and we win this game, we would jump into second and we would qualify. So, uh, and if we win by a lot, I think we might qualify no matter what because of goal difference, but I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, all we can do is try to win, and so we are. We are going to try to win. I had a long talk with the boys before the game. I put Dicko and Akin up front because... Sorry, I'm getting emotional. They're our most experienced players. They're the ones um, who I trust uh, with the uh, responsibility of putting the ball in the back of the net, which is the thing that we have struggled with the most this season. And I believe that they can do it. I believe that they are the right guys for this job. I trust them, uh, as I told them in the tunnel before the game. Uh, I don't just trust them. I also love them. And I believe that we can win this game. Um, it isn't going to be easy. Uh, but nothing worth doing ever is. So today I thought I'd talk about, uh, several people asked in comments recently whether I think uh, revolution is better or incremental change. And uh, the answer probably won't surprise most of you from my perspective because, you know, I am old and, oh, I thought that was it. I thought that was it for sure. Um, but maybe shouldn't have left that to my right back. Uh, anyway, um, my concern with revolutions is how rarely they prove to be revolutionary. Um, too often, revolutions end up being a 360-degree revolution where you end up right back where you started, except only after a lot of people have died. Oh, get there! Oh, man, you can tell they want it today. They are hungry. Come on, boys. Um, and, and uh, like, you know, there are lots of examples of this in history. Uh, from a long time ago, you can look at the French Revolution, um, and from much more recently, uh, you can look at what happened in uh, Egypt or what's happening in Libya right now. Um, you know, these are very difficult. Uh, these are these are political revolutions that started out with a lot of hope and enthusiasm, uh, and the radical change proved um, unsustainable or uh, proved to be uh, destabilizing in a way that led to. Uh, a sort of full, a full 360 degree revolution rather than maybe the 180 degree one that people had been hoping for. Um, I worry a lot about that with, with revolutions. I think the hard work is, is not in toppling a government but in forming a new one um, in, any, in, in any part of uh, civilization. We've seen that over and over again. You see that with empires, you see that with uh, democracies, you see it with um, military coups. Uh, it's, it's really hard to uh, replace uh, a government that you have successfully destabilized with a very, very stable one. Oh, gosh, just needed, just needed Akinfenwa to touch the Y button in that situation. And somehow I couldn't quite get off the Y. Couldn't quite get off that Y pass that I needed. Um, come on, boys. You can do this. This is a winnable game. We are playing the worst team in... in our round and we're playing them at home. This is winnable. Oh no, not if Shea LaBeouf does crap like that though. Um, whereas incremental change I think has a really good track record. Like, like one of the things that made the American Revolution successful uh, is that it was a very conservative uh, revolution. It did represent a massive change, um, but it also represented in a lot of ways slow uh, change, you know. Um, it's also one of the things that made the American Revolution disappointing, I have to say. Um, you know, in, but uh, but you know, the the American Revolution really ultimately set out to uh, conserve power in the hands of the relatively few people who had, on some level, had it, um, even if their allegiances were different and their obligations were different to each other and to the the um, you know to the institution of government, whether it was the crown or um, the Republic. Uh, so I don't want to say that the American Revolution wasn't a big deal, of course. It was. It's just that, like, um, you know, it in many ways, uh, you know, wasn't 
wasn't nearly as radical as, for instance, the French Revolution. Oh, gosh, Jego, Jego from way outside trying to get his shooting boots on. Um, you've got to say that the Wimbly Wombly's have had the better of the game so far, but having the best of the game matters 0% um, if we do not win this game. So we've got to find a way to win, uh, which so far we have not found a way to break down this sweet, sweet Rosenberg defense. So I... I I think radical. There are also examples in history, of course, of radical change working, um, working, working well. Um, the one that comes to mind immediately is, uh, you know, the uh, East Germany basically in the, sh the span of a few short years dissolving, um, and a reunified Ger Germany emerging in its wake. That was a, you know, a new political entity um, with, you know, different rules of governance and stuff like that uh, that has done really, really well. Uh, the breakup of the Czech Republic and Slovakia is another great example of pretty radical change. Um, you know, two countries, one country becoming two. Uh, that um, was, you know, happened peacefully and uh, prosperously. Uh, I think that there are a lot ex of examples on both sides of radical change working and of uh, slow incremental change working. Um, I do think when I look at the great successes of the U.S., to me, they are mostly um, there are like a few moments of really radical change. And then there are a bunch of moments of incremental change. Like I think the Social Security, I think Social Security has been a big positive in um, American life. And it was a pretty it was a pretty radical adjustment from the previous system. Um, which relied, you know, either on pensions or on support from families and stuff. Oh, no! The worst of all possible outcomes just almost happened, which was losing the game. But at this point, losing is the same as tying. We must win um, if we are going to have a chance uh, to continue our European adventures, which I desperately want to do because this is so fun. It is so fun to play in Europe. Um, oh, 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 Dicko! Yes! Wait, wait. No, it was Akin Fenwa. He's big, he's round, he's worth 10 million pounds. Akin Fenwa, Akin Fenwa. I couldn't believe with that kind of light feet it would be a man who weighs 475 pounds, but it was. Wow. And he puts it in the side of the net, and the celebrations are on. Hope springs eternal. Of course, we still need results in the other game, um, but uh, at this point, a a, a boy can dream. Um, so yeah, I think there are examples of really radical change being good in the in U.S. history. I think there are also examples of um, incremental change uh, working working really well. So I guess I would say that it's situational, and maybe it depends on the scope of the injustice, right? Like you could say that um, abolition was a radical change. You know, it required a, a, a change in the constitution. Um, it required a rethinking of what constituted, you know, even even personhood, um, or, or certainly legal personhood, if not if not moral personhood, um, and and that that's a that's a radical and sudden change that came, you know, at the end of a extremely bloody. Get there, get there, get there, get there, get there. Oh, ah, golly gee, that was close. Trying not to curse in my nervousness. Um, so yeah, I think, um, uh, but I think there have also been examples of really good incremental changes. I think, uh, like for instance, the way that income tax has evolved in the U.S. over the last 100 years has been uh, a series of, oh, it's a disaster. Oh God, oh God, I'm so upset. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm just devastated right now. I just feel sick to my stomach. Um, what is our best chance for winning this game? Jago, Jago, and Beer come out, and these guys come in, and that, I think, is our best chance. Okay, we're just going to try to win. Um, that's devastating. Though. There's no two ways about it. A handsome, blonde, Nordic type scores a goal. Just the worst feeling. Um, so, yeah, the short answer is that uh, I, think it, I think it's situational. I think it depends. And uh, I think generalizing too much... Uh, is dangerous. I also think, um, I think, you know, I think, I think the thing to remember about radical change, in my opinion, is that it is destabilizing. 
and that comes with opportunities, but it also comes with big, big, what, what the frick are you doing? It comes with big, big risks as well. Um, any kind of destabilization comes with big risks. Now I'm just going to try to win the game uh, because that is what we need to do. Come on, get back there. Fight for the ball, fight for your teammates. All right, we're going ultra attacking. Yes. Yes. Oh, no. Frustration for the Wombles. Come on, boys. We can do this. Yeah, pass to John Green. Pass. Pass. Yes. Yes, I know you're tired. You can do it, Meadsy. Get on that horse. Gawk and Fenwa! Didn't happen. Didn't happen, and we're here in the dying minutes. We gotta get the ball back. Will we even have a chance? Will we even have a chance? Are we, oh, wow. Frustration for the Wombles. I don't think that we're gonna have an opportunity to win this game, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, not with a corner kick. I'm going all out attack. Oh, that's how it's gonna end. Devastation, the end of our European reign. Oh, darkness everywhere. Just not very good at this game. Lyle Taylor, shake hands. Yeah, you know, we gotta be a good sport even in a time of tremendous pain. Well, at least we got to go to Europe. Uh, but Alexander Soderlund, one shot, one goal. He had one shot and that's all he needed. Oh, man. Brutal. Best wishes.